of the Rio Olympics may be over, but not for long as the Paralympics start next week. However, so far just 12% of the tickets have been sold and there are worries that the athletes would be competing in near empty stadiums. We're now a Paralympian and a physio have launched a crowdfunding campaign for people to buy up the spare tickets to give them for free to local children. The International Paralympic Committee is giving its official blessing to the campaign to hashtag fill the seats, which is hoping to raise up to £300,000. Well, we're lucky to have four Paralympians here to discuss the plans and look ahead to Rio and the man who set up the crowdfunding campaign. He is Jack Chu, a physiotherapist. Also with us, Naomi Riches, who won gold in rowing at London. The London Paralympics 2012, Noel Thatcher, is a six-time Paralympian and five-time gold medalist. Also supporting the campaign is Paralympian Mark Powell and Georgie Bullen, who competed in the 2012 Paralympics. Thank you all very much for, for coming in. Jack, tell us first of all why, why it was that you decided to do this. Well, as the, as the news started to break about the deficit, that was BBC mentioned £7 million deficit that was made in the funding, um, it just seemed an outrage that there would be anything less than what happened at the London Olympics and uh, Paralympic Games. They should be similar. Um, and so it just felt like someone needed to do something. Why not make it us? And so being a physiotherapist in healthcare, we recognise the incredible advocacy that can be done by the athletes and to inspire people from adversity and other backgrounds to exercise and to compete and to challenge themselves despite all their issues or any problems they might have and so why not get going put the crowdfund and it seems to be catching people's imagination from now. No you're, you're nodding you sort of see the the inspirational side of, of people watching Paralympians in action. Yeah absolutely and I'm old enough to remember the days when we did compete in empty stadiums as well so my first Olympic Games, the Paralympic Games rather, was in 1984 and we didn't even have the same host city, we competed in a university campus in Long Island, New York and there were more people on the track than in the stands so that's, I think, but more than the, the, situ the current situation, but what was particularly saddening to me um, once I heard what, you know, the statistics was that, you know, this was going to have a direct impact on the ability of athletes, and particularly athletes from third world countries, to take part in the Paralympic Games. And the Paralympic Games has a, a value beyond it, its, uh, its status as, as the, the global you know, um, para sport um, championship. It has huge effects on, on attitudes, particularly in third world countries, towards disability, and it's a very, very powerful driver for social change. So, you know, to, to, for athletes from those countries not to be able to take part, I think it's an absolute travesty. And also, you know, for the children of, of Rio to be able to see Paris, Paris sport, it's the, it's the kids that, that get driven and inspired by it. It's sitting in the stands in London. You know? Yeah, I mean, just explain, Jack, how the funding works, because you assume it's all kind of locked down, but right at this last minute, obviously, the lack of ticket sales was having a direct impact on, on the way that the games were going to be actually held. That's right, yeah. There, there was... Um a lot of fingers being crossed behind the scenes and while the Olympics were going on there was clearly a big blind spot that we were all uh, left away from and so that deficit of, of the core ticket sales meant that they just had to compromise the games in a massive way. Now one of the big ways in which we, the little we could do politically at that point but what we thought if, if we can gather some funds and get tickets to the children of Rio this huge and we can fill the stadia, of course but also just getting the, getting the children inspired uh, would make a difference and so this the, the IPC have got on board uh, to try and to, to endorse the hashtag fill the seats campaign now in order to for every thirty dollars raised that's a day out for a real child who'd be fed given merchandise and given the spectacle that they deserve mark you were at london 2012 i mean seeing what's going on with the rio paralympics just feels like such a letdown after the, the london paralympics and the the, the the great success they were it really does and london did it did set the bar very very high it was the greatest paralympics of all and it, it really is disappointing um it was, it was always going to be hard to replicate what we did at, at London, um, but then plans you would have hoped would have been in place to do that, um, but they unfortunately weren't. Naomi, what do you think when you see what's going on with Rio and, and you look back to, to London 2012? It is incredibly disappointing, but I really do feel that, that London 2012, as has been said, set a very high standard and it also changed the perception of so many people. They started to look at disabled athletes as athletes who happen to have a disability rather than putting the disability first they looked at the ability of people and so this campaign with the belief and the and the pride that's behind all the athletes you know around the world 
I really do feel that this campaign could make such a massive difference. What was it about London that achieved that, do you think? I'm not entirely sure. I just, I, I think it was the performances, it was the passion of the athletes, it was the, you know, these athletes have put their lives on hold to train for that one event, that one chance to win that medal. And they really felt that ev they were supported all the way, right the way across the finish line. You know, I, I, I just think it was, it was the passion. I think as well, we have to give a lot of credit to what Channel 4 did throughout the Paralympics. They, yeah. they really, really drove the, the disability side of things and they, they educated people in a really, really positive and, and trendy way. George, Georgie, you were at 2012, yeah. weren't you? What, what was it like being a part of that? I mean, it was insane. I'm, I'm from a minority sport, you know, and, and it's so a your disability goal. sport, global, um, and which hardly anyone's heard of. And so we would go to tournaments, we still go to many tournaments, where, you know, we won't perform in front of even a thousand people, and yet we came out into the copper box, and every single game we had 7,000 people cheering us on you really walked into a wall of noise that just swallowed you up and it was the first time that that it really felt like we were being taken completely seriously and supported wholeheartedly as soon as we'd score a goal or win a match the entire stadium erupted um, and i'd never experienced anything like that before so it was I mean, it was incredible, and you just feel that, that looking forward into to Rio, you, you want that for every athlete going there because they learnt it. It's part of the atmosphere and, and buzz, and it, it is what, part of the thing that makes them so special, the Paralympic Games, that you have got the, the eyes of the world on you, cheering you. Jack, because what's happening in Rio, has that set back the clock for Paralympians? It's... it's do you mean sorry? It's turned. It's gone, but it's gone the wrong way. It's gone the wrong way from that that high, you know, the the sellout stadiums in London, and and then this. Well, it seems that way. I think if we were talking now about this now as in a fortnight's time, I think we would be. But we are on it. We're turning the time. I mean, a million. We've now a million tickets have been sold. We're starting to turn a corner. Uh, we're only really just getting the media behind us for this campaign. So might we be able to? Um, Get, get the stadium filled, make the spectacle again, and, and try and change the, Mark mentioned a, a high bar, but, you know, try and make up that deficit so at least it's not as, as tangible. Um, so it does feel like we've taken a backward step from, from London to some extent. However, if we, can, uh, if we can make even a small difference to that, then hopefully we can still get inspired, not just the children of Rio that we can hopefully send there, but the spectacle that that then brings means that for the healthcare community that myself and Noel work within, it's, it's amazing just how inspiring people can, people that would otherwise turn their back on exercise and therefore health. It's incredible just what the Paralympic Games can do for them. And, and, and not just people with disabilities, but anybody who's able bodied looking at what people achieve coming, coming through adversity. This is the thing with, with, with London, I think, having stepped back from my career as an athlete and, and working for the BBC as a pundit during 2012. What the, the real value, I think, you know, at the Games, I mean, and the real passion and the credit, I think, for 2012 huge amount must rest with the public of this country to taking athletes with disability on board and, and, and paying, you know, to come and see disability sport, filling you know, the Olympic Stadium day after day after day and going home on the train at night and hearing, you know, city boys suited and booted talking about, you know, the dust up to Johnny Pico, etc. Uh, you know, that, that's, that was an entire game changer. That was a, that was a social change, I think. It was more of than, than an attitude change. And I think this is what I think we're hopefully just about to see happen in Rio, and you get those children in that stadium. You know, those children will go on to be, you know, become sports men and women. They'll go on to be teachers. They'll go on to be healthcare workers. They'll go home and tell their parents about what they saw, and that's where you see that groundswell of, of, of change occur. So I think, you know, what Jack is um, and the campaign have, have facilitated is, is an amazing thing. And I think what we'll find is that if you know, we came back we five years in you know, two or three weeks' time, as Jack says, and sat and had this conversation, we'd be talking about how amazing the Rio Paralympic Games were. I think there'll be, there'll be more positives than negatives that come out of this. Let's hope. How's the campaign going? How much have you raised? It's brilliant. I mean, we've got two campaigns that are now merging. And so I've got to mention Greg Nugent, who was, um, we both had simultaneous ideas. And he's the marketing director at the London 2012. And so through contacts with Greg is also the, the people power that we were able to generate through our campaign, which was slightly before. We're already, I mean, hopefully it's clocking up now, but we're about uh, $25,000. 
that's great. So, and the, the social and attitude change that Noel is talking about, have you felt that that has continued post London 2012? I think it, it, was, it was pretty evident a couple of weeks ago when um, myself and Georgie both attended the anniversary games and to, to, to go to a stadium and have near enough full capacity to there to see Paralympic sport in this country was something else. Like it, that, that type of thing has never happened before, and that's that's completely that, that shows the the attitude of the of, of this country towards disability that is, is changing massively. What has that given to you personally? It's it's a lot of, it's a lot of self satisfaction, but also it's it's pride as well because we we were all part of London to help change that. You know, all the the Paralympics from you know my my dad competed in in the game, which which Noel has as well. And, You've seen. Yeah, sorry. about that. No, but you, this, this, is, this is constant. It's been constantly building. You know, it's been building, 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 and then we got to a point at London where it was huge, and the, and we, as a country, as have really, really helped to change, change that attitude, which is we should all be proud of that. What's the legacy for you then? Well, one of the things that I've noticed, I, I do quite a lot of work in schools and I will say to the, to the youngsters, and I mean, you know, four years ago when they were sort of four years old, and I'll say, so, what happens every four years, the biggest games, and they go, uh, and I go, Olympics, and they go, and Paralympics, and they, and they know it, and the eight-year-old kids that were four when it happened know it, and they feel it, and they want to be part of it, and just hearing people say, I can't wait for the Olympics and Paralympics, they come as a, as a total pair now not as, you know, the Paralympics doesn't seem to come second anymore. And uh, the, just remembering back as well to the, the Paralympics closing mm -hmm. ceremony, I mean, it, you know, it was every bit as good, if not better, some thought, than, you know, the, the Olympics oh, 2012. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the legacy for you, George? I mean, the thing is, I, I spend, or I used to spend all my time explaining what gold ball was, um, and I'd be absolutely shocked if someone said, no, no, I know goalball. And more and more people have understood a sport that, that is, it's still minority, but it's insane when you find someone who understands it and has seen it. And, and you just, it takes you aback because you get stuck in your own little bubble. And sometimes you think that, that maybe people don't care about Paralympic sport. But when you have those moments um, and you see the build up for each Paralympics now, it, it really takes you aback. And I mean, I, since the Paralympics, I've started a business using goal balls, team building. And that never would have worked in the past. You know, people wouldn't have been open or receptive to it. And so it's amazing that now people don't just hear Paralympics, hear about a Paralympian and think, oh, bless. They think, no, that's, that's an athlete. That's something to be impressed by. Um, and you know, being put up as the superhumans has really helped that because it, it's, you know, just amazing to feel that that's how you can be viewed. Um, and that's completely different to, I think, pre-2012. And, and that's what you've been talking about, Jack, isn't it? That's what you see with the physio work that you do. Absolutely, yeah. And you see it across the spectrum. So I work in musculoskeletal physiotherapy. Um, and so we see I see uh, people at the higher end, so I see people that are struggling but with back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, etc. And we see people like that being, who feel like they need to retire themselves from exercise, which of course has huge health consequences and we're trying to inspire them back to it, to be able to, for them to understand just what can be achieved is, is huge and we use examples such as that. But at the other side of the spectrum, my partner works in intensive care at the Manchester Children's Hospital with some very poorly children and, and she as well sh understands the, the legacy that the Paralympics can have in inspiring young children who are really struggling to, to really achieve when, when stories come of, of athletes at the games who have been in those dark places and the families that have struggled that to then achieve what they can is, is huge across the healthcare spectrum. It's great to have you all in. Thank you very much. Good luck with, with the, the campaign and everything else. Jack, Naomi, Noel, Georgie and Mark. Thank, thank you. you.